uh, Shalom. All praise to the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, who will well. Peace and salutation to you, brother. Hopefully, that question is word of truth and sincerity. All right, this video here is a response to her response to the video. Um, so she does not understand, has no clue, which well, she's obviously an unbeliever. Um, it's very clear to see. But uh, this video here is through your incredulity, you have been found wanting. All right, through your incredulity, you have been found wanting. So what is incredulity? Uh, unbelief. Through your unbelief, you have been found wanting. What does wanting mean? It means to lack. So through your unbelief, you've been found lacking. And what is she lacking? That wisdom. Okay. Because if she lacked, I mean, because if she had the wisdom, she wouldn't be having these questions. Or if she had questions, she would uh, accept the answers that are that have been given to her. All right. This is a uh, Sirach chapter one, verse fourteen. All right, and it says, "To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It was created with the faithful in the womb." Okay, so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So first, you have to fear. All right, I'm gonna skip down to verse twenty. The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Okay, so how does the fear of the Lord drive away sins? You, you know, you, you are conscious of what you do, or you know, you try to be, and you try to avoid, or you eschew evil. You try to avoid sins. Okay, and I'm going to skip down to verse 25. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. So if you want wisdom, keep the commandments. That's if you want wisdom. But if you want to continue to be wanting, then don't. Continue about in the world thinking that you know everything that which you don't know. All right. And we're going to go through the video uh, and play it and, 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 you know, go through the scriptures and answer these questions that she's coming with or, her, or you know, respond to her responses. All right. This is Sirach chapter two, verse 15. It says the fear of the Lord will not disobey his word and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. So this is what I'm saying. You gotta, if you fear Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, you're gonna do whatever it takes to try to please him. Okay? That's if you have that fear. If you don't have that fear, you'll you'll go about in this earth thinking that you know everything and and that uh like she said at the vi end of the video, make it make sense. Okay? It doesn't have to make sense to you because you don't have the fear of the Lord. So it won't make sense. All right. But let's. Uh, let's just real quick. <clears throat> so I'm going uh, so to play it and I'm going to stop it as I go through and give him hang on what she's saying. All right. Because I have to go wash this conditioner out of my hair. But the Hebrew is real quick because I have to go wash this conditioner out of my hair. But the Hebrew Israelites have made a video that they keep sending to me. And I am honored to announce they have used me for their Bible study class. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know much about the Israelites. But I do know that they read from the same Bible as Christians. But they don't consider themselves Christians. As a matter of fact, I think they hate Christians as well as women. But that's not the point. Another thing that I know is that their favorite passage in the Bible is Deuteronomy 28. This passage tells us about all the curses that people would suffer 
from disobeying God. If you sit back and read these curses, you'll see that they are scarily similar to the history of what blacks have been through. I'm guessing that black people were the only people on the planet to disobey God. Or it could be very possible that- Now, she said her favorite passage is Deuteronomy 28. Hmm? Our favorite passage is the whole book, the entire book, okay? We eat the, the whole book, the entire roll, the, the, the mornings, the lamentations, the woe, the, the sweet and the bitter. Okay, but see, that's the difference between the Christians and and the, the you know, the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, we eat the entire roll, the whole book. We, we, we don't shy away from anything that's within there. Okay. So, but she would notice if she had any type of understanding okay but she doesn't because it's been deprived of her uh, let's see this is Job chapter 39 verse 13 gave us thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks or wings and feathers unto the ostrich which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain and without fear, because the Most High hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. Okay? And she is a classic example of being deprived of wisdom. Okay, she has no wisdom and no knowledge, no understanding of the not not just the scriptures in general, but just the way things the uh, the way the Lord set it up. Okay, we are reading the plans of our oppressors. I'm gonna take it back a little bit. Guessing that black people were the only people on the planet to disobey God, or it could be very possible that we are. Now, you said that it could be that. First of all, it's not about being black, okay? You know, it's about if you're, you know, an Israelite, which is a Negroes, Latino, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? And she said that... Eating the plans of our oppressors. Right, one more again. Black people were the only people on the planet to disobey God, or... Okay, so no, you, you just say that she said black people the only people that disobey as she said God well the thing is the Israelites were the only people that were given the law statutes and the commandments okay we were the only ones given that okay we were the only ones that made that covenant with our power alright it could be very possible that we are reading the plans of our oppressors written by the oppressors Anyway, we'll figure that out later. From my understanding. All right, so she said it could be we're reading the plans of our oppressors written by our oppressors. Okay, let's say, so let's say if that is the case. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to a few scriptures and see why would your, why would the oppressor say this about themselves? Okay. Now. We know that uh, Esau Edom is the so-called white man, you know, the, the the wicked in the earth, okay? So, this is Job chapter 31. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Okay, this is them talking about themselves. This is Esau Edom. He's like Edom is younger, the young one in the spirit. Okay. Um, Job was saying he didn't want, didn't care for him to sit with the dogs. Okay, you didn't even trust them to sit with your dogs. Yea, where to might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want and famine they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste. Okay, this is when they was up in the, uh, the caves and the mountains. Who who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. 
They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the clefts of the valleys and in caves of the earth and in the rocks. This was uh, in the dark ages when they were driven out into the mountains. OK, history right there. So they wrote about their history of being driven into the mountains. Among the bushes they braid under the nettles. They were well, they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. So why would you? Why would the oppressor call themselves base men or lowly men, or you know, or in viler than the earth? Okay, why would they call themselves that? Okay, next question. All right, you I, just just wondering. Why would they write this stuff about themselves if they if uh, Esau Edom or our oppressors wrote this book? This is Exodus chapter 20 verse 16. This is a law. It says, and he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Did they not steal the Israelites? Did they not sell the Israelites? Are we still not in their hand? Obviously. We are. So that means that they should be put to death. And this is according to their writings, correct? Based on what she's saying. All right, this is Malachi chapter one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So they wrote about their, their God that they're serving, hating them forever and not loving them. And they call them the wicked. Does that make sense to write to if they wrote this about, about themselves? No, it doesn't. Let's continue on. Let's get another one. It's Acts chapter 5, verse uh, 30. The God or the power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So they wrote in there that nobody else on the planet Earth can, can uh, repent or be forgiven of their sins but Israelites. And they're not Israelites. That doesn't make sense at all. So let's let's get this here. Let's continue on. We, we can go with this all day. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Uh, Least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, for uh, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that after it, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. So their so their God that they wrote about to control us rejected them. They wrote that. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So their God that they wrote about to control us rejected them and said that they can't repent for their sins, even though they sinned, supposedly. It's according to what she's saying. Make it make sense to me. Let's get another one. This is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing to with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Did not Esau Edom trouble uh, the Israelites? Did not the so-called white men come and steal? Uh, come and steal us? 
from all over, including the West Coast of Africa, brought us over here to serve hardcore slavery and still found in their hands, still on the bottom, still being oppressed. Or, they, or not, they not troubling us on all sides. It says it's a righteous thing to recompense them. Uh, tribulation to them. And what is their recompense of tribulation? This is uh, Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. There's recompense. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints as we're patiently waiting on. Okay. And I definitely couldn't leave this one out. Why would they write this about themselves? It's Obadiah chapter one. I'm going to start at verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. All the trouble that you caused in the earth, all the hell that you put on people, all that's going to be done unto you. Thy reward shall be, uh, shall return upon thine own head. So what they did, they're going to get it back. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance as Israel and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Okay. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord have spoken it. Yahweh Shemal have spoken it. So, why would they write in there that their God is going to basically eradicate them, to to eliminate them from off the face of the earth? There will not be any remaining of them. Why would they write that about themselves? Doesn't make any sense. But I digress. Here we here we go. Let's get back to what. What uh what she talking about? I believe that black people have been justifiably and rightfully cursed by God, and that is why we have been and will continue to be oppressed. My confusion comes in because in Galatians it said, "Yes, we we constantly disobeyed the laws of uh, our power, Yahweh Shemayosha, so thus we suffer the curses." Okay, in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through uh, 14, the, uh, the blessings are outlined. Matter of fact, I just grab it real quick since I'm talking about it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, it says, uh, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power, Yahweh thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day uh, the Lord thy power will set thee on high above all nations on, of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord now these are all the blessings now you go down to verse 15 but it shall come to pass if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now if we don't fit none of these blessings in here but we fit all these curses here that lets you know hey we chose the curses. So thus yeah we are still cursed based on what, based on what we did. All right? Rightfully cursed by God, and that is why we have been and will continue to be oppressed. My confusion comes in because in Galatians it says that Jesus or Yeshua, tomato, tomato, redeemed us from all. All right, now she said Jesus or Yeshua. Then she said tomato, tomato, which, which basically means it doesn't matter, it's the same thing, which. Jesus and Yeshua are, are probably the same thing, but they're not Yahweh Shai. All right. So let's uh, let's look this up real quick. 
It's all I'm going to do. Type in the name Jesus. Go to images. And this is what you see. You see a man with uh, hair white like wool. Uh, feet like a fine brass as if, it, as if it burned in a furnace. Do you see that here? Does any of these images look like that? Does that look like that? That's blonde hair, blue eyes. Look at the eyes. That's a curse. Look at this here. <laughs> that's, that's a curse. <laughs> Look at this here. Look how faggoty. Do you see this? This is Jesus. This is Jesus. Okay? This is not how he's described in the scriptures. Okay? So that's Jesus. Now let's type in Yeshua. All right, this is Yeshua. <laughs> Doesn't look any better, does it? This is Yeshua. <laughs> and this nigga here bugged out. Look at this. But this is Yeshua. <laughs> Yeshua. See what I'm saying? This is Yeshua. No. No. Jesus and Yeshua. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. But the name is Yahweh Shai. Now, we're not saying that these are the actual images of Yahweh Shai. You know. But they are more closely related images to what's described in the scriptures. Um, his head on his hair is white like wool. Okay. Um, and his feet were as, as um, to fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. You take that brass. It's, it's like and it's like a goldish, yellowish gold color and then you burn it and it's a dark brown color. Okay. Eyes are red. His eyes are as a flame of fire. All these things. This is the, this is a close, we're not saying that this is Yahweh Shai, but it is a closer depiction than what you than what we usually see. Okay? And even when you go into the book of Revelation, it said he is clothed with a garment down to the foot. And, and uh, his girt about the golden paps. All right? But anyway, I just wanted to uh, point that out too. That that the the difference between Jesus and, and Yeshua and, and Yahweh Shai. Alright. All the curses of the law by becoming a curse. Fusion comes in because in Galatians it says that Jesus or Yeshua tomato tomato redeemed us from all the curses of the law by becoming a curse for us. The last part of what I just said literally tells us that this character is a curse and we are not going to ignore that. But our focus for now is on the first part. I'll repeat it. It says Jesus redeemed us from all curses of the law. Why then did all of this black oppression happen after his alleged death? And why do y'all still claim that black people are cursed? Making it all right, so let's get the scriptures. Let's get uh, the scripture that she's talking about. But it says that Yahweh shall redeem us from the curse of the law. Okay, this is uh, Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to start at verse 6, but the point is going to be at 13. It says, even as Abraham believed the Most High, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that the Most High would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In these shall all nations be blessed, which they were. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with Abraham. A blessed with faith for Abraham. 
Okay. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And did we did we continue in in the uh, the book of the law? Did we continue? Did we keep the laws, statutes, and commandments perfectly? No, we didn't. We constantly went off. So therefore, we got the curses. Okay, as according to Deuteronomy twenty eight and fifteen. So you got to put it together. But. It says, uh, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Most High. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. No, it went, no, we're not justified by the law. Because first of all, it is impossible for us to keep all the laws 100%. Because if you break one, you, you're guilty of breaking them all. Okay. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Uh, Hamashiach hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay, this is the, this is what she was talking about. Hamashiach hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, "Curses everyone that hangeth on a tree." Okay. So, how did he redeem us from the curse of the law? When he came and shed his blood to die. For us, for the remission of our sins. Okay. Uh, so thus, Yahweh Shai, he was perfect in what he did. And he was made a curse. Okay. So let's get, um, let's get that in Deuteronomy 21 real quick. Let's get what it's quoting. Because it says, cursed is uh, everyone that hangs on a tree. This is Deuteronomy chapter 21, uh, verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. So if so if he committed a sin, and then his uh, judgment is to be put to death, and you decide to hang him, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a curse of the most high. That thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy power giveth thee it for an inheritance. Okay. So Yahweh was cursed because he was made a curse for us because he committed no sin worthy of death when he came as Yahweh But he was hung on that tree. Okay. He was hung on the cross. Why? Because he was that perfect sacrificial lamb that the Most High Yahweh sent. To, uh, to reconcile us back unto the Father. Okay? This is Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach Yahweh who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Hamashiach Yahweh have made me free from the law of sin and death. That's what he came for. We can walk in the spirit or we can be in the spirit and not after the flesh because he came to die for us. OK, it made us free of that, because according to the law, if we were all just by the law, every single one of us is like would be dead. If we were judged strictly on the law, that's why your house I had to come. Um, verse three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. OK. The law wasn't weak, but the flesh was weak. Okay, there was a uh, there was no fault in the law, but the fault was in the flesh. We couldn't keep it. The Most High sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. How did He condemn sin in the flesh? Because Yahweh Shai was sent in the likeness of sinful flesh, meaning He came. Uh, came in the world through the natural way, compacted it, compacted in uh, blood, you know, made made of sin, compacted in blood. Not made of sin, but uh, made of flesh, made of flesh, compacted in blood. You know, he, he the the same way we're living, the same things that we're seeing, the same things we experience, the same emotions, all that stuff. Yahweh had those same things, but he overcame the flesh. That's why he was in the likeness of sinful flesh and he condemned the sin in the flesh. How did he condemn it? By not succumbing to sin. Okay. 
that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. OK, the righteousness couldn't be fulfilled by us because we were imperfect. We, we are flawed. OK, we couldn't keep the law. So he came in the flesh, kept the law perfectly so that the righteousness might be fulfilled to show us this, how you do it. It can be done through me, through the spirit is how you do it. So not through the flesh. That's what Yahweh Shai came to show us. That's what the Galatians is, is going into. OK, but this is the reason why. Uh, let's see, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. It says, "Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of the Most High, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Yahweh Shai Mashiach." And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. How did he do that? By sending his son to die, to shed his blood for our sins. He was that ultimate sacrifice. To wit, the Most High was in Hamashiach reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing the world of Israel unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. This is why I said, if we were judged by the law and Yahweh Shai didn't come, we would all be dead. If our trespasses or our sins would be imputed unto us and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh, now, when we were our ambassadors for Amashiach, as, as though the Most High did not beseech you by us. We pray you in a Mashiach stead, uh, be ye reconciled to the Most High, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of the Most High in him. Okay? Matter of fact, let me grab that real quick. This is uh, John chapter 1, verse 29. It just, the last uh, verse we read, well, not the last verse, but uh, where is it at? Verse 19, to wit that the Most High was in Amashiach reconciling the world unto himself. This is uh, what he meant by that. Uh, I lost it. Let me, let me get back there real quick. It's John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John seeth the Hawashah coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of the Mosai, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's Israel. Because why? We read earlier, Acts 5 and 30, the Mosai raised up Yahawashah, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him after him, him after the Mosai exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So to take away the sin of the world, that world is Israel. All right. Let's get back to see what she was, what she was going to finish off with saying. from all curses of the law. Why then did all of this black oppression happen after his alleged death? Okay. She asked why she asked why did all the oppression happen after his death? Why? Because we still had to suffer the curses. Okay? Because okay, we still had to learn. We still have to be taught. Okay? Because we chose the curses, that has to play out. As a matter of fact, let me get that in uh, Revelation uh, 22. This is Revelation 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on the other side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, we'll finally be able to take of those trees to, to eat of them, okay, for the healing of the nations, that fruit. 
Invert, check this out. Focal point. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So when the kingdom of heaven is come, that so after this is over with, after the final, after uh, Esau is taken down, or the end of Esau's world and the beginning of it that follows comes, then there shall be no more curse. So yes. Yes, although he came to redeem us, you know, to reconcile us back to the father, you know, we still have to serve out the judgment. OK, it's the same thing with, with you as a parent. You know, when you when your when your child does something and you punish your child, um, you know, your child may beg for your forgiveness. Like I, I'll just say if your child does something that you don't like or, you know, that, that you instruct them not to do and you get ready to whip them. They they uh they hold their hands and they say, please don't whip me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. Guess what? Oh, I forgive you, but you still finna get this ass whooping. That's what happens. We were forgiven. We still gotta serve out this punishment though. That, that's all it is. It's it's literally just that simple. Okay. And to further the point, let me grab this here now that I think about it. Uh where is it at? It's going to be Psalm 119. This is uh, Psalm 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. That's the whole purpose of us going through this captivity, being punished. Is so that we can learn and appreciate righteousness. That's the whole purpose of it. It's literally just that simple. Okay. So why do y'all still claim that black people are cursed? Make it make sense. And one more thing. Stop using this damn book to oppress and belittle y'all women. because I have to go watch this and that's that's about it I was just hitting those uh, I was just hitting those major points okay alright so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put the full clip uh, in the in the end of the video so that you can you know just check it out straight forward alright but uh like I said, I uh, hope you I hope you was edified. So call all you how about Shima Shah about Shima Kaku Dash. Um Shalom. Real quick, because I have to go wash this conditioner out of my hair. But the Hebrew Israelites have made a video that they keep sending to me. And I am honored to announce they have used me for their Bible study class. Now I'll be honest, I don't know much about the Israelites, but I do know that they read from the same Bible as Christians, but they don't consider themselves Christians. As a matter of fact, I think they hate Christians as well as women, but that's not the point. Another thing that I know is that their favorite passage in the Bible is Deuteronomy 28. This passage tells us about all the curses that people would suffer from disobeying God. If you sit back and read these curses, you'll see that they are scarily similar to the history of what blacks have been through. I'm guessing that black people were the only people on the planet to disobey God. Or it could be very possible that we are reading the plans of our oppressors written by the oppressors. Anyway, we'll figure that out later. From my understanding, the Israelites believe that black people have been justifiably and rightfully cursed by God, and that is why we have been and will continue to be oppressed. My confusion comes in because in Galatians, it says that Jesus, or Yeshua, tomato, tomato, redeemed us from all the curses of the law by becoming a curse for us. The last part of what I just said literally tells us that this character is a curse, and we are not going to ignore that. But our focus for now is on the first part. I'll repeat it. It says, Jesus redeemed us from all curses of the law. Why then did all of this black oppression happen after his alleged death? And why do y'all still claim that black people are cursed? Make it make sense? One more thing. Stop using this damn book to oppress and belittle y'all women.